Hey guys, Tommy here with the Fastlane car, and behind me is the brand new 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe, a super important vehicle for Chevrolet. And in this video, we're gonna find out, is this new Tahoe behind me worth $76,000? For 2021, the Tahoe has been completely redesigned. It looks a lot more modern. And this one is a Z71, which means it's the off-road equipped, ready to hit the rocks model. Now, some of the differences with the Z71 are right down here. You've got this big bash plate, except the front portion of it, it's actually plastic. It's just aesthetic. It's not until you dive underneath that you see the real effective metal bash plate. And then you've got these red tow hooks. And this is very important. A tow hook in 2020 has to be painted red or it won't work. That's a known fact now. The new updated front end does share some similarities with its big brother, the Silverado. You do have this really distinctive LED light signature with your high beams and your low beams mounted up top. And then you've got this vent on the fender. And this is supposed to allow air to flow past the wheel. Hey guys, this is Andre for TFL, and I wanna thank our friends at AutoStop Eliminator for bringing you this video. You will want this if the Auto Stop Start feature on your car or truck is driving you nuts. This plug and play device remembers to disable the features so you don't have to, and it works with a variety of different manufacturers and makes and models, from Ford, Ram, General Motors, Jeep, Dodge, and Subaru. Click on the link below in the description of this video to get your auto stop eliminator and avoid those surprise engine shutdowns. The rear of the Tahoe is of course all new as well, but one of the funny quirks that you'll never notice unless you watch this video is actually in the taillights. Now, you'll notice on the driver's side taillight, there's a little script that spells out Chevrolet, but on the passenger side, there's a bow tie. This drives me crazy, I'm, I'm a little bit OCD actually very OCD and having two different fonts, two different descriptions of the vehicle in each taillight, oh, definitely a little weird. One feature I absolutely love on the rear of the Tahoe is the rear wiper, which is completely hidden when you're not using it. It's not until you turn it on that it gently drops down from its little cubby and then starts working before hiding away when you're done with it. That is a nice, elegant touch. The interior of the new Tahoe has been completely redesigned and this is probably one of the best aspects of the vehicle. The old one, it was a very functional interior but it didn't feel very premium. This is very upscale. It's covered in leather and wood and nice shiny trim but it also has some incredibly cool features. Let me take you through them. It's time to talk about the Tahoe party trick, which has to do with the center console. Now, first of all, you've got this nice little rubberized pad here, which is perfect for holding cell phones. But take a look at this. This, of course, opens, and you've got a fairly large cubby in here, but it doesn't go all that deep. And that's because this whole center console, it moves, it slides. Check this out. There's a button up here on the overhead switch panel. And when I push this button back, the whole console glides rearward. And now look at the space I have to put groceries or perhaps if you have a purse, this would be a good place to put a purse. And then there is a secret hidden cubby below the actual console itself. This would be perfect for like a squirt gun or maybe a BB gun or like a Nerf gun. I think that's probably what that's intended for. But you close that up and then I push the overhead switch and the whole console glides back into position. That's pretty rad. The transmission selector in the Tahoe is actually very interesting. First of all, it's a push button design, which clears up a lot of space in the center of the vehicle. But when you go to push the button for reverse or drive, you notice nothing happens. And that's because it's actually a pull design. So for example, I have my foot on the brake to select reverse. I stick my finger underneath the button, pull up, the reverse lights up, and now I'm ready to back up. Same thing for drive. I hook the drive button with my finger, drive lights up, and now we're ready to go forward. However, park and neutral are traditional buttons, like you'd expect them to be. 
These are the climate controls in the front seat of the new Chevrolet, and it's dual zone automatic climate control. So for example, to turn it on, I'm gonna push the auto function there, and then you've got a little display within the knob that shows you what the temperature setting is set to. One interesting thing is, it's probably got the most absurdly powerful fan of any vehicle I've ever experienced. So let me turn that fan down, and we'll talk about these two buttons right here. This actually controls the rear climate control. So if I select this right button, on the screen, you get a little pop-up, and this will allow me to control the climate experience for the rear passengers. This is a little interesting. On the right side of the vehicle by the passenger, there's another secret cubby. It's spring-loaded. You push the little lever in, and now I've got a cubby, which is just the wrong size for a cell phone. But you could put odds and ends in there, and it is spring-loaded as well. That's pretty cool. A couple of interesting things on this overhead switch panel in the Tahoe. First of all, you've got controls for the massive panoramic sunroof that controls the shade, and then you've got a tilt function here, and even, check that out, a slide. Three separate switches, which is a little bit unusual. Then you've got your homely controls for your garage. This button turns on and off the dome light when you go ahead and open up the door. And this is one of my favorite functions. This switch here limits how much the rear hatch will open. So for example, if you live in an area with a small garage and you're worried about the trunk actually hitting the roof of the garage, you can limit it to just three fourths so that it doesn't quite open all the way. Another cool thing which I absolutely love are these two buttons right here. These two buttons electrically fold the third row of seats. Check this out. And then this will not only fold the third row of seats, it will actually put the third row of seats up as well, all remotely. The infotainment system in the Tahoe is super easy to use. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the things you'd come to expect. But one of my favorite features are the integrated cameras. Take a look at this. Some of the best cameras I've ever seen in any vehicle. First of all, full surround view cameras, but I can cycle through a bunch of different options. So for example, this is a front facing camera. I can also go to the backup camera and then look at this one. Just to the right of that, we have an option to see a bird's eye view of what's directly behind the vehicle, both front and rear with lines that show me where the wheels are gonna go as I turn. The gray lines are for the front wheels and the yellow lines show you where the rear wheels go. That's a very, very nifty feature when you're maneuvering a tight area. Plus, take a look at this. I can even see what my front wheels are doing as I turn and even a view that shows the rear wheels. This view is handy if I had a hitch in place for hitching up a trailer. And then this button allows me to turn on a little setting which displays where a hitch would go if I'm trying to back up a trailer so I can line up the ball with the receiver. Pretty cool stuff. And then this one makes the whole experience full screen. Lots of places to put things in this new Chevrolet. First of all, there's a cubby down here which includes Qi wireless charging for your cell phone. You also have these large cubbies over here on the side of the center console. In the door, you've got not one, but two, potentially even three cubbies if you include the grab handle. So much space in the door, that is absurd. And then lastly, you've got a very large glove box. I do love the gauges in this Tahoe. You've got analog tachometer and of course speedometer gauges, but in the center, completely configurable display with gauges up top for oil pressure, temperature, fuel, and voltage. To the left of the steering wheel in the Tahoe, a bunch of really interesting controls. Now, first of all, you've got this line of switches. This right here controls your lane keep assist. You've got your parking sensors, and then this button is for your auto start stop as well as a button to engage the power outlet, traction control off, and then hill descent control in the Z71. That's a really nice touch. All of these buttons are really tiny though. I've got pretty narrow fingers and you really gotta pay attention when you hit them. This button, that engages the parking brake, and then I love this little slot right here. This is really thoughtful. If you live in a city, if you go into parking garages a lot, this is a great little space to put your parking ticket, just like that, or a credit card, or in this case, a room key. Nice touch there, way to go Chevy. Little thing that makes a big difference. Below that key slot, you've got an area here for the 
trailer brake control. It's on the left side of the steering wheel, which some people might complain about if you're used to it on the right, but you've got a little slider here for your trailer brakes and then two adjustments for the gain. Two massive buttons to control the amount of light that is displayed through the instrument cluster when it's nighttime. And then this switch over here is very interesting. First of all, these are your four wheel drive controls. Two high, four high, an auto function, which will alternate between two high and four high if it's, for example, winter time and you have to go in between the two. And then four wheel drive low as well. This one controls various drive modes from trailer to sport modes to off-road modes. And then this button engages the air suspension. And this is where things get really interesting. This Chevrolet Tahoe is equipped with an optional air suspension system, four corner air suspension, which allows me to adjust the height of the vehicle up and down about four inches. The lowest level is called axis height. That's for ease of entry and exit. When you're driving around normally like you would on a daily basis, the vehicle is gonna ride in a normal ride height. That looks like this. For rough terrain, there is an off-road one setting, which is about an inch above the normal height. It looks like this. And then when you're going deep into the woods and you need just a little bit of extra ground clearance to help you clear a rock or a root or a boulder, there's an off-road two level, which you have to be in low range to engage. The back seat of the Tahoe is a very comfortable place to be, at least in the second row, and the seat actually moves back and forth quite a lot. There's a pretty big extension forward and back, a lot like the front seat actually, and I have these optional rear view entertainment monitors, which is nice, especially if you're a kid. They include these wireless headphones. Of course, USB-C there, heated rear seats in this model, and then this is the control for the rear climate zone. There are a couple of ways to get into the third row of the Tahoe. First of all, because the second row is captain's chairs, I can of course just climb over and then head into the back. That's a pretty good solution, but of course these seats do fold and pivot forward. Now I can do it manually with a lever on the side of the seat, fold it down, pull that lever again, and it hinges forward, but there's an even faster solution if I put this back up. You'll notice a little button over here on the C pillar. I push that once, the seat folds, I push it again, there it goes, and it actually pivots forward and now I can easily access the third row, and when I'm back here, pretty decent leg room. Of course, I can move this uh, second row forward and backwards, which helps uh, kind of find an equal ground, but decent headroom. Yeah, it's such a big SUV that you're going to be pretty comfortable in the third row, even if, even if you're an adult. Plus, of course, I even have USB-Cs back here. One of the best features of the new Tahoe is that you can actually access the trunk in a couple of different ways. Now using the key, you'll notice there are two different buttons. If I click this bottom one twice, the glass pops open, and this is easy access if I don't want to open up the whole rear lift gate. I can simply drop my groceries in, and that's nice. But of course, using the key fob, I can open up the whole rear hatch. It's now set to max, which means it'll open fully, and we can see the rear space, which is pretty astronomical. In the Tahoe and the Suburban, GM has actually gone to an independent rear suspension, which clears up some more space here in the back, and I, of course, can fold all the seats using these buttons here. I can fold them all down, just like that, and then I can even, come on, there we go, fold the front rows. Now look at the amount of space, it's just enormous. Really useful if you have a family. Underneath the vehicle, you'll find a spare tire mounted like a pickup truck. There is of course a hitch on the Tahoe. It's underneath this cover. Just a couple of thumb screws, undo those. And then the cover folds out of the way. Like such, come on. And there you have your receiver with of course both four and seven pin connectors for your trailer. Now the Tahoe when properly equipped can tow up to about 8,400 pounds. However, this one with its options and its configuration will tow 8,200. And one thing that GM does, which is super, super nice, is they actually put the tow rating in the door jam. Not a lot of other manufacturers do that. That is a great feature that GM includes. 
Under the hood of this Tahoe, you'll find a naturally aspirated old school V8, 5.3 liters, about 355 horsepower. I can't tell you how it drives because driving impressions are still embargoed on this full size SUV, but be sure to stay tuned to TFL Truck and TFL Off-Road because we have a towing test coming of the Suburban. We've got off-roading videos with this Tahoe. And of course, we've got a drag race right here in TFL Car comparing the Tahoe and the new Suburban with the bigger 6.2 liter. Be sure to stay tuned for that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's been a ton of fun to make, but these videos take a lot of time and a lot of resources to put together, and it's getting harder and harder to do them on YouTube Revenue, so if you want to help support the channel, help support videos like these, maybe check out our Patreon in the description below. We'd really appreciate any support. Thank you so much. Well, there you guys have it, the brand new 2021 Tahoe Z71. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this new full-size SUV. You get a lot of comfort, a lot of capability, but you also pay a lot of money, $76,000. Is it worth it? I'd love to hear your opinion. Head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews, and be sure to stay tuned because we got a lot more Tahoe and Suburban content coming your way.